and click OK. And I'm now in the forms actually. And one of the problems about forms is this one. I can see I have page names and this one ends with shipping. This one ends with COD out here. And down here, it ends with shipping and then system indicator. Um, that's a problem because I have uh, two uh, things that are actually doing changes in here. One of the ways to solve this one is actually to go in and manually take this piece up here and uh, put it in here and that solved my problem. But now when I get to the controls, I have to remember to move them to a different tab also. And I can do that in the designer, but I can also do it in here actually. So this one is, you can see that's in page number four here and that's in page number four. So let's go in and say these ones here, custom lines, inserted last one down here. So I have all my code added in here. But now I have to remember to go in and change my in page number down here. So uh, I'll have to go in and all the lines that I read down here to actually change my in page number to five down here. And I'll show a function um, in the next uh, form I get here that actually makes this one a, a lot easier because you're not going to do all this editing manually in here. There's a function that actually can deal with these kind of things. This one, for some reason, was already in page number five. So. This one is uh, menu items on the customer card. And again, you just have to pick the order. Uh, but I'll just say the one that comes from the custom line, insert them last down here. So if you can't recognize the type of code, always go use the login. This one is, yeah, um, put the insert at last. Again, new menu items and no changes before. If you have one version like this one that is very clean, you can always implement that into something that is not very clean. This one happens to be two very nice versions. Um, but in that way, you can always uh, do merchants like that one. In here. Again, I have changes up here. And if I actually wanted to see, I can see by this one, but I don't really know how many lines I have or if I had more changes. Down here at the bottom, there's some status. And I can see this one is a number of groups, actually. Uh, I have one inserted group, zero deleted, zero changed, zero equal. At total, I have six inserted lines, and that's the six lines here. In the other one, I can see I have, again, only one inserted group, and I have only 38 inserted lines out there. So again, for my custom lines, uh, select the position and this one is now a page name again and this one has an e-ship tab this one has a warehouse tab um, or it's maybe even something that has actually changed in there yeah, the e-commerce has changed in there so in that case I have to do the same trick as before I'm saying okay I'm going to take that because Microsoft decided to rename one of them in here and I'm just going to add issue. If you want to see that those one changes, as I go up and down here, if you notice this one down here, you can see that you can actually compare uh, data like that one. And with higher resolution, you get a high, longer status bar also. This one is my sales quote. And um, Let's see if the new function actually works in here. Uh, it don't because it's uh, actually uh, giving, me, giving me problem which Microsoft have renamed something. But I can see after e-commerce up here, I have issue. And down here, I have to add that one. So again, it's the same tabs. I didn't really do anything. The sales order, I guess this uh, e-commerce has been changed again. So I actually have to do these manually in here. If you have multiple languages in the database, you probably want to get rid of them to begin with. Uh, or you want to, at least when you're doing these merges, put them on all languages because else you won't be able to switch if the page name and L is missing some in another language. This one is... Uh, 
this one is a place where if I just went in here and say last, I would actually break these uh, curly brackets because I would put it halfway in the subform code down here. So I have to be real careful with that one to actually make the code look right afterwards. So even if I use the functions, I'll have to do it right in here. Again, um, this one is menu items. Menu items. This one, I guess, it has, uh, it only has e-commerce in that one. Um, and up here, um, actually, that page name and mail is not even changed in here. So I can actually go and just uh, use this one up here instead. Again, be careful here because this one, if I put that last, it would actually break that subform uh, down here. So again, the same case here where uh, something has been This one is again one of those ones where there's really no changes except uh, renaming in here. I need to make this change manually. Same thing goes here. This one is one where now it's a subform, and I can actually decide the order of the columns or the fields is actually how they're going to show up as columns. So I'm just going to put them last. I've done with all the menu items. This one is again one where there's uh, two two changes that just touches each other. So. Uh, that one. This one has a subform, I guess. Uh, ship to address is a list. This one, be careful with that one. Again, the position makes a difference here. Same goes here. This one is one where my lines actually has to be placed in the middle of Microsoft's code in here. So I'll go with my custom line, select the line number, and it brings up, but I don't have to manually select the lines because I have the status inserted up. So I'm in code unit 80 now. This one is uh, Microsoft got rid of all their variables, so I just need to put this one somewhere. This one is code that is depending on the warehouse transfer. Um, and uh, it looks like it has to be done before the modify code down here. Um, you can see in here the modifier has been moved up. So I probably need to um, put that code first as it is up here. So I put it in here first. This one is just a. Uh, um, change to some copy filters, so I'll go add that one down here. If you want to create manual lines, you can actually do it down here also. But, uh, I'm now finished uh, merging uh, 
this year from five oh service pack one uh, to two thousand nine R two hundred. Of course, the application don't necessarily work, but all the changes I have has now been moved into uh, two thousand nine uh, service pack one. So this one is basically how to use the merge tool. It is still, of course, some manual, but it's really, um, if I look at uh, this version in here, so I go and say, okay, let's look at all the change code in here. So I filter on that one, take these records and uh, paste them in Excel in here. And say, okay, let's look at the uh, totals uh, for all these lines in here. Oh, um, yeah, I had a, that's not true by the way, because this one, I had a total of 685 groups in here. This one is object properties. Um, so if I go look at this one in here, I had 406 changes. I didn't, I maybe had 40 changes I have to deal with manually. That means 90% of them actually went in automatically. In here. And that's only because the code that was changed was touching or, or inside the one that Microsoft was changing that to. So this one allows a very fast way of actually going through and uh, doing a merge like this one.